If we take a look at the base of the brain, which has been removed from the skull, there's very little of the midbrain that we can actually see. Yet, as I demonstrated in my lab work last week, if the under aspects of the temporal lobes are gently pulled apart, then the upper portion of the brain stem can be seen. This so-called brain stem consists of the midbrain, a round protrusion called the pons, and a stalk tapering downwards called the medulla oblongata, which passes out of the skull through the foramen magnum, and of course becomes the spinal cord. Are there any questions before we proceed? I have one question, Dr. Frankenstein. That's Frankenstein. <laughs> I beg your pardon? My name is pronounced Frankenstein. <laughs> but aren't you the grandson of the famous Dr. Victor Frankenstein, who went in a graveyard, stuck up freshly buried corpses, and transformed... Yes, yes, corpses? yes, we all know what he did. But I'd rather be remembered for my small contribution to science than my accidental relationship to a famous kook. <laughs> now may we proceed with your question. Well, sir, I'm not sure I understand the distinction between reflexive and voluntary nerve impulses. Very good! <laughs> Since today's lab work is a distinction on just this distinction, why don't we proceed? Mr. Hilltop here, whom I have never met, nor given any prior instruction to, has graciously offered up his services for this afternoon's demonstration. <laughs> Mr. Hilltop, will you hop on your feet? <laughs> nice hopping. <laughs> Mr. Hilltop, will you raise your left knee? You have just witnessed a voluntary nerve impulse. It begins as a stimulus in the cerebral cortex, passes through the brain stem, and to the muscles and used. <coughs> Mr. Hilltop, you may lower your knee. <coughs> Reflex movements are those made independently of the will. They travel along pathways between the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system. You dirty, rotten, yellow son of a bitch! We are not aware of these impulses, nor do we intend them to carry out the contraction of muscle. Yet, as you can see, they work perfectly well on their own. However, what if we were to block these nerve impulses by simply applying local pressure? This can be done by using an ordinary metal clamp, placing it at the swelling of the posterior nerve root for, oh, say, five or six seconds. Now, you mother-grabbing bastard! As you can see, all communication is shut off. Despite our mechanical magnificence, if it were not for this continuous stream of motor impulse, we would all collapse like a bunch of broccoli. <laughs> In conclusion, it should be no... Give him an extra dollar, will you? Yes, an extra dollar. <laughs> that anything other than common injury should be taken very seriously. For once this nerve fiber has been severed, there is no way in heaven or on earth for life to be regenerated back into it. Are there any final questions before we leave? Dr. Frank? Frankenstein? <laughs> yes. Isn't it true that Darwin preserved a piece of vermicelli into a glass case until by some extraordinary means it began to move with voluntary motion? It depends. Are you speaking of the worm? Or spaghetti. <laughs> Why the worm, sir? Yes. I seem to recall reading something along these lines when I was a student. But you have to remember that a worm, with very few exceptions, <laughs> is not a human being. <laughs> but wasn't that the whole basis of your grandfather's work, sir? The reanimation of dead tissue? My grandfather was a very sick man. <laughs> <laughs> but as a Frankenstein, aren't you the least bit curious about it? Doesn't you, the bringing back to life what was once dead not hold any intrigue to you? You were talking about the nonsensical ravings of a lunatic mind. Dead is dead! <laughs> Look at what has 
taken on with hearts and kidneys, sir. Hearts and kidneys are tinker toys! <laughs> I'm talking about the central nervous system. But, sir... I am a scientist, not a philosopher. You have more of a chance of reanimating the scalpel than you do the central nervous system. But what about your grandfather's work, sir? My grandfather's work was doo-doo! I'm not interested in death. I'm more interested in the preservation of life. <laughs> Class is dismissed. <laughs> Dr. Frankenstein? That's Frankenstein. My name is Gerhard Falkstein. I have traveled 5,000 miles to bring you the view of your great grandfather. Baron Beaufort von Frankenstein. wedding night. Oh, you're so incorrigible. Does that mean you love me? You bet your boots it does. Oh, my darling. Oh, satin darling. Satin sweetheart. The dress is satin. It wrinkles so easily. Sorry. Bye, darling. <laughs> Goodbye, Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> darling? Transylvania Station? Yeah, yeah, Trap 29. <laughs> oh, can I give you a shine? <laughs> no, thank you. Ah.
Frankenstein, you're putting me on. <laughs> no, it's pronounced Frankenstein. Do you also say Frodrick? <laughs> no, it's Frederick. Why isn't it Frodrick Frankenstein? It isn't, it's Frederick Frankenstein. I see. <laughs> you must be Igor. No, it's pronounced Igor. <laughs> but they told me it was Igor. Well, they were wrong then, weren't they? But you were sent here by Herr Foxstein, weren't you? Yes. My grandfather used to work for your grandfather. Oh, nice. Of course, the rates have gone up. Yes, yes, I'm sure we'll get along splendid. Oh! <laughs> you know, I... I don't mean to embarrass you, but I'm a rather brilliant surgeon. I could take a look at that hump. What hump? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Allow me, master. Well, thank you. This way. you'll be more comfortable in the rear. Oh. <laughs> Woo! What was that? Oh, that'll be Inga. Herr Fogstein thought you might need a laboratory assistant. Temporarily. Oh. Oh, hello. <laughs> Would you like to have a hold of the hair? Well, it's fun. Atmospheric discharge. There's nothing to be afraid of. Werewolf. Werewolf? There. <laughs> what? <laughs> there, wolf. There, castle. Why are you talking like that? I thought you wanted to. No, I don't want to. Well, Suit yourself. <laughs> I'm easy. <laughs> and there it is. Home.
The staircase can be treacherous. awful lot of books in here. Yes, it was Wittel. The Baron's Medical Library. And where's my grandfather's private library? I don't know what you mean, sir. <laughs> well, all these books are very general. Any doctor might have them in his study. This is the only library that I know of, Dr. Franken. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Frankenstein. <laughs> well, we'll see. Good night. Would the doctor care for a brandy before retiring? No, thank you. Some warm milk, perhaps? <laughs> no, thank you very much. No thanks. Oh, well, tea! Nothing! <laughs> Thank you. I'm a little tired. Then I will say good night. Good night. <laughs> good night, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Herr Doctor. <laughs> Good night, Frau Blucher. <laughs> <laughs>
No, 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 Destiny, destiny, no escaping, that's for me. Destiny, destiny, no escaping, that's for me. Destiny, destiny, no escaping, that's for me. Dr. Frankenstein, wake up! What is it? You are having a long plan. That strange music. I don't know. But it seems to be coming from behind the bookcase. Behind the bookcase? Let me take a look. <laughs> You're right. It's coming from behind this wall. Where is it? Where is it? What? There's always a device. If I could just find the triggering mechanism. Seems to be louder from over here. Hand me that candle, will you? I think I have it figured out. <laughs> when you pull out the candle, I will use my body to block the bookcase. <laughs> now listen to me very carefully. <laughs> Do not put the candle back with all of your might. Push against the other side of the bookcase. Is that perfectly clear? I think so. <laughs> Good girl. Put the candle back. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, look. A passage there. Whatever that music is, it's coming from down there. I'd better go take a look. Oh, and let me convince you, please. I don't want to be here alone. All right. Close your robe and follow me. Nobody care for me. <laughs> Igor! Frobrick! How did you get down here? <laughs> to the dumbwaiter. I heard the strangest music coming from the upstairs kitchen and just followed it down. Call it a hunch. to be the first. Damn your eyes. Too late. <laughs> oh. 
So, this is where it all happens. Trust me. midst of this darkness, a sudden light broke in upon me. A light so brilliant and wondrous and yet so simple changed the poles from plus to minus and from minus to plus. I alone succeeded in discovering the secret of bestowing life. Nay, even more, I myself became capable of bestowing animation upon lifeless matter. <laughs> It can work! <laughs> Skipper? Mm. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> As the minuteness of the parts formed a great hindrance to my speed, I resolved, therefore, to make the creature of gigantic stature. Of course! That would simplify everything! <laughs> <laughs> In other words, his, his wings, his feet, his hands, his organs would all have to be increased in size. Exactly. He would have an enormous Schwanstocker. <laughs> that goes without saying. He's going to be very popular. <laughs> so what we're aiming for is a creature approximately seven feet in height, with features either congenitally or artificially proportionate in size. Something like... This? <laughs> Hello. Looks like we're on to something here. Crude, yes. Primitive, yes. Perhaps even a little grotesque. But something tells me this is our man. Frankenstein, newly arrived from America. Ah, yes, yes, yes. I was told you were here. Well, I'm Constable Henry, sir. 
Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you, Constable. Oh, chill to the bone, sir. A nice warm fire, maybe the thing for you? Yes, yes. A little nip from the old bottle wouldn't be bad either, would it, sir? That's the ticket, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you have everything in tan, sir, I'll say goodnight to you. Thank you, Constable. At your service, sir. Always. Good night. Good night, sir. Constable. What an awesome sight! What a profound and reverent night is this! With such a specimen for a body, all we need now is an equally magnificent brain! You know what to do? I have a pretty good idea. Good boy! Oh! <laughs> didn't, didn't that used to be on the other side? What? <laughs> Never mind. You have the name I gave you? Yes. I have it written down. H. Del. Brook. Hans Delbrook! <laughs>
He's hideous. He's beautiful and he's mine. Hurry now. We're fighting both time and the elements. Are you sure this is how they did it? Yes, yes. It's all written down in the notes. Now hurry up. Tie off the kite and hurry back down here as fast as you can. What's the hurry? There's a possibility of electrocution. Do you understand? I say there's a possibility of electrocution. Do you understand? I understand, I understand. Why are you shouting? Did you? Did you tie up the kites? Of course. Good boy. Check the generator. You've got it, master. <laughs> Igor, release the safety valve on the main wheel. Yes, master. Can you imagine the brain of Hans Delbrook in this body? <coughs> well, dear, it's time. Are you ready? Yes, Doctor. Elevate me. Now, right here? Yes, yes. <laughs> Up onto the platform. Oh, oh the platform. Yeah. <laughs> 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 on that fateful day, when the stinking bits of slime first crawled from the sea and shouted to the cold stars, I am man! Our greatest dread has been the knowledge of our own mortality. But tonight, we shall hurl the gauntlet of science into the frightful face of death itself. Tonight! We shall ascend into the heavens. We shall mock the earthquake. We shall control the thunder and penetrate the very womb of impervious nature herself. I go. What I get the word? Throw the first switch. Yes, master. Get ready. Get set. Go. Second switch! Throw the third switch! Not the third switch! Throw it, I say! Throw it! Life! Life! Give my creation life! Turn everything off! Nothing. Oh, Doctor, I'm sorry. Oh, no. We have a good chair. Science teaches us anything. It is to accept our failures as well as our successes with quiet dignity. Grace. You son of a bitch bastard! What did you do to me? What oh, did you do to me? Oh, Doctor, you killed him! I don't want to live! I do not want to live! Quiet, dignity, and grace. <laughs> Mama! Tosh! This man is different, I tell you! See, this one you speak with him for only five minutes, yeah? He's a Frankenstein, and they're all the same. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's in their blood. They can't help it. All those scientists, they're all alike. They say they're working for us when all they really want to do is rule the world. Yeah! yeah. That is enough! <laughs> I will not have this meeting become a free-for-all! <laughs> Very serious accusations you're making. Very serious. All the more painful to me, your elder, because I'm having nightmares from five times before. Won't. <laughs> we have yet to speak to the one man most qualified to judge this situation fairly. Herr Inspector Kemp, would you please talk with us, please? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a riot is an ugly thing. And once you get the 
from started. There is little chance of stopping it. Short of not. I think before we go around killing people, we had best make damn sure of our evidence. We need to make sure that young Frankenstein is indeed following in his grandfather's footsteps. Huh? <laughs> following in his grandfather's footsteps! Footsteps, footsteps! Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. I think what is the order is for me to pay a visit to the young doctor and have a nice, quiet chat. Reputation! Reputation! Oh, doctor, you mustn't do this to yourself. You've got to stop thinking about it. But, but look, you, you haven't even touched your food. There! I've touched it! Happy! <laughs> you know, I'll never forget my old dad. When these things would happen to him, the things he'd say to me. Well, what did he say? <laughs> what the hell are you doing in the bathroom night and day? <laughs> Why don't you get out of there? Give someone else a chance. Uh, 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 oh, maybe it's better this way. Stupid creature. Perhaps he is better off dead. What is this? Schwarzwalder cursed on it. Mm. Oh, do you like it? <laughs> I'm not partial to desserts myself, but this is rather excellent. Who are you talking to? <laughs> to you. You just made a yummy sound, so I assumed you liked it. <laughs> I didn't make a yummy sound. I just asked what it was. But you did. I heard. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Well, now look here. If it wasn't you, and it wasn't you. Yes, my dear. We can be 
me a minute, please. Hi, Gorg. May I speak with you for a minute? Of course. Sit down, won't you? Why, thank you. No, no. <laughs> This village here, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> to them, he is very real, especially when there is a Frankenstein residing in the castle. Dart? Dart? Dart, dart! <laughs> nice groping. Thank you. <laughs> I would think a man of your intelligence wouldn't fall for all of this superstitious rot. It is not superstition <coughs> that worries me, but it is genes and chromosomes. <laughs> <laughs> Rubbish. Well, you may say, but after all, this is Transylvania. <laughs> and you are a Frankenstein. <sighs> you uh, seem unusually upset by this discussion. Not at all! <laughs> well, this was amusing. Now, if you'll excuse me, Inspector, I'm a little tired. So I may give you assurance to the village people that <laughs> you have no interest whatsoever in the continuing your grandfather's work? Mm. May I take that as a yes? Mm. <laughs> Very good. I'm sure you can find your own way out, Inspector. Until we meet again, Baron. Yes, come by any time. We're always open. to say 
that you're free. Would you like that? <clears throat> they just wanted to hurt you, but I'm going to help you. <laughs> well, that was close. Frau Blucher! <laughs> Stop! Don't come any closer! What are you doing? I'm going to set him free! No, no, you mustn't! Yes! Are you insane? He'll kill you! No, he won't. Not this one. He is gentle as a lamb. <laughs> I'm not afraid. I know what he likes. <laughs> like music. Yes. It's in your blood. It's in the blood of all the Frankenstein. It reaches the soul. Them birds are useless. Your grandfather used to play up to the creature. He was making. And it was you the whole time. Yes. <laughs> you were the one playing the music in the middle of the night. Yes. So that I could find my grandfather's private laboratory. Yes. And that was your cigar smoldering in the ashtray. Yes. And that was you who left my grandfather's book out for me to find. Yes. So that I could. Yes. And you invent a word. Yes. Yes. Say it. He was my boyfriend. Come back. Come back. For the love of God, come back. You'll never catch him now. He's free, I tell you. Free. We've got to find him. You understand? We've got to find him before he kills someone. What have I done? Oh, God in heaven, what have I done? <laughs> Forgive me, 
But you're mute. Do you see it? Do you see how heaven plans? I, a poor blind man, and you, you, a mute, incredibly large mute. But my child, your hand is frozen. You must be cold and hungry. What would you say to a nice bowl of hot soup? Eh? Oh, I know too well. I know too well what it means to be cold and hungry. And I know too what it means to know the kindness of a stranger. Are you ready for your soup? <laughs> well, not your bowl. <laughs> oh, my friend, my friend! You don't know what your visit means to me. How long I've waited, waited for a real human being for company. Sometimes in our preoccupations with life, with, with the little things, we, we forget the things that <laughs> <you make. laughs> Yes, yes. Oh, and now, now some, some wine. How would you say some, some wine to go with your soup? Here you are. Now, now. Let me, let me propose a toast to a long friendship. Oh, my friend, how hungry you must have been. And now, a special treat. I've been, I've been saving for, for just such a special occasion. <laughs> Cigars, uh, take one. <laughs> oh, my friend, my friend, you don't know how wonderful it is to, here you are. <laughs> well, well, no, don't, don't inhale till the tip blows. <laughs> Talk to him. No! Yes! Love is the only thing that can save him now. And I'm going to show him that he is loved, even at the cost of my own life. No matter what you hear in there, no matter how cruelly I scream, no matter how harshly I beg, you do not open this door, or you will undo everything that I've worked for. Do you understand? Do not! Open this door! Yes, Doctor! Nice working with you! Did you know that? <gasps> but people laugh at you. People hate you. But why do they hate you? <clears throat> because they're jealous. <clears throat> Look, 
at that boyish face. <laughs> Look at that sweet smile. <laughs> Do you want to talk about sheer muscle? Do you want to talk about brute strength? Do you want to talk about the Olympian ideal? You are a god. And listen to me. You are good. You are not bad. That's a good boy. That's a sweet boy. That's a mother's angel. I want the world to know without shame that we love him. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to show you how to walk, how to think, how to move, and how to speak. Together, you and I will make the single greatest contribution to science since the creation of fire! <laughs> <laughs> My name is Frankenstein! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I take great pleasure in introducing to you a gentleman whose family name has been both famous and infamous. May I present Dr. Baron Frederick von Frankenstein! <laughs> My fellow scientists, <laughs> Tests and neurosurgeons. A few weeks ago, coming from a background as conservative and grounded in science as all of you, I began an experiment in incredulous as it may sound, the reanimation of dead tissue. <laughs> <laughs> What I have to offer you might be the gateway to immortality! Uh, awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> may I present to you for your philosophical and intellectual pleasure, the creature. Oh my god! Oh my god. There's nothing to fear. First, for your consideration, the primary functions of cerebral activity, balance and coordination, walk, heel to toe. perform the primary functions of motor activity, but for what you are about to see next, we must enter quietly. Not in the realm of genius! <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Madame and Monsieur, Dame and Heron, from what was once an inarticulate mass of lifeless tissue, may I present a cultured, sophisticated man about town! <laughs> Hit it! If you're blue and you don't know where to go, Sorry. 
somehow equalize the imbalance of his cerebrospinal fluid, why, he'd be as right as rain. But how, how before it's too late? If only there were some day I could help relieve this torture that you're going through. Mm -hmm. If only there were some way I could help relieve the tension. <laughs> if only there were some way I could give you a little peace. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
Excuse me, darling. But what is it exactly that you do do? <laughs> well, I assist Dr. Frankenstein in the laboratory of the kind of intellectual discussion. Oh, and that's what I thought he was just happy about me. Yes, Igor, will you give me a hand with the bags, please? Certainly. You take that one, I'll take the one with the turban. No! 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 Stop that! He's talking about the luggage. Yes, master. Oh, ladies, this way. You know, it's going to be a long night. If you need any help with the girls, don't hesitate to... <laughs> you settle down now, cause we're gonna be pals, right? <laughs> nice and cozy, just like old friends. <laughs> What's the matter? You afraid of this little fire? This can't hurt you. See? <laughs> so Mama was right. See, Mama was right. Little boys ain't supposed to play with fire, is they? Because they might get hurt. <laughs> circumstances I could spend the night here with you. Would you want me here, like this, now, so soon before our wedding night? So close, we can almost touch. Yes! <gasps> or, 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 we could wait just a little while longer where I can give myself to you without hesitation. Where I could be totally and unashamedly and legally yours? That's a tough choice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I suppose you're right. Of course I am. Come over here, give me a kiss, good night. No tongue! Oh. Good night, sweetheart. Good night, sir. Good night, darling. <laughs> Sweet dreams. I love you. Oh, you love me too? Don't let the bed bugs bite. He is loose, the famous lightning of his terrible swift sword.
fingertips. Listen here, I need to be back by 11.30. I'm expecting a very important phone call. What, what are you doing? I, oh, you've got to be serious. <laughs> decided that if I couldn't inspire love, which was my deepest hope, I would instead cause fear. I live because this poor, half-crazed genius has given me life. 
He alone held up an image of me as something beautiful. <laughs> and then, when he could have escaped danger, he used his own body as a guinea pig <laughs> to give me a calmer brain and a more sophisticated way of expressing myself. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that is an entirely different situation altogether. As the leader of this community, allow me to be the first to extend my hand in friendship. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, now let's all go back to my house for some wine and some cheese and some... <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> to the lemme yard! little party. He meant so well, and I mean, he did throw it for you after all. Tell me you liked it. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I know mummy's just a scatterbrain without a serious thought in her head, but tell me you love her just a little bit, don't you? Uh-huh. <laughs> Darling, I'm ready for bed. Are you almost done? Uh-huh. Did you see what I did? I put a hamper in the bathroom, one for your shirts, one for your socks, and your poo-poo undies. Mm. <laughs> Here I come. Ever get from him? Mm. 